MovieWeb.com. It just, it seemed to me like the events in the film that we can't talk about were <laughs> happening to you or you were experiencing them as we sort of experienced them yeah. while watching the film. Because, I mean, yeah. you, mm -hmm. it takes certain turns that you're not expecting. And, I mean, it seemed like that was happening to you as you were putting the film together. Is that yeah, yeah. Well, my initial intention was to keep picking at it for many years, you know, um, as Zachary grew up and everything and eventually give it to him when he's old enough to process and deal with it. Um, but when the second tragedy depicted in the film occurred, uh, you know, it suddenly changed course for me because um, here was a person, this woman uh, had, you know, was charged with Andrew's murder. There was a mountain of evidence against her. She fled to Canada and Canada let her walk free on bail. Uh, while th for a year and a half, while this extradition process was trying, we were trying to get her back to the United States. And not only that, they let her have you know, t charge of a baby while she was accused of the most violent of crimes. And then the social services department in Canada wasn't even treating Zachary as a child protection case. They were treating him as, um, they, were, they were treating it as services to the mother. Like, oh, this is a mother who can't work because she's accused of murder, so we're giving her services and what does she need? And I'm like, it's, it's, cr it's like management wasn't speaking with the ground workers who, the ground workers had no, I, I don't understand how they couldn't have known because it was in the papers everywhere. Basically my point, the point of the film being that um, I, I do not think that, uh, I think to stretch the idea of presumption of innocence, which is an you know, indispensable tenet of justice at trial, you know, um, which is where it's, in, in, you know, its main intention is to be used, to stretch that and pervert that to the point where it allows an actual murderer to repeat his or her crime while awaiting trial is just makes a travesty of the whole situation and puts the, the general public completely at risk. Um, and in this case, we got the, you know, the bad end of that, obviously. And so I think the movie shows a pretty strong argument for, uh, for changing that. Yeah, it does. As it were. <laughs> well, so I hope so. <laughs> well, it's interesting to me is it, if you read this story in any other medium, I mean, it'd still be heartbreaking to just see it. But the thing about your film is when I was watching it, at first it felt very personal. And I didn't even know, like, the first beat you're talking about the murder. Oh, I didn't, about, even, I didn't about, know about, about anything about, about it. So yeah. when I was sitting there watching it, I was like, my initial thought was, why am I watching this very personal thing for this kid? But the thing about it was, it was put together in such a way that, like, I couldn't really turn away from it because it was like so fast-paced. Oh, thanks. Well, now I'm wondering, did you change the beginning of it to try to keep the audience interested in it, or had you always been like putting it together in that sort of pace? Well, I, did, I didn't start editing until um, you know a year and a half ago. Yeah, you know, I, I had all the footage. I. After oh, so um, everything had happened before you started editing. Oh yeah, yeah, oh. yeah. No, I yeah, um, I after the events of August eighteenth, two thousand and three, I kind of didn't know what I was going to be doing. Like, do I continue with this? What do I? Have? Well, I guess so. Yeah, you know, and and um, I that's what that's after that was when we sort of decided that I was going to eventually put this out publicly um, to try to you know influence bail law, as we said. Um, and then I kept picking at it and I kept shooting more interviews and I hadn't actually started cutting because I wasn't quite sure when I was going to be done. Like, how do I know when I'm done? What am I waiting for here? And when um, Andrew's father wrote a book about everything that happened and he, you know, uh, got a publisher and then they had a street date and I'm like, oh God, his book's about to come out. I better finish my movie. So I kind of <laughs> sat down and, set, and then I set like a, a completion date for myself and did it. But when I started editing, I was editing with the intention of I'm trying to engage anyone off the street who never met Andrew, doesn't know anything about him, doesn't know anything about this case, doesn't know me, uh, because I'm trying to engage them to become a part of this story and participate in writing letters to, you know, the Canadian Parliament and trying to get these, uh, get these, get the bail law changed there. So when I, so I, I, when I began cutting, I was always thinking of I was just trying to complete the movie I originally started, but having in mind the fact that this is going to be watched by a completely cold audience who doesn't know me from Adam. So, so, so when, when editing, I, I had that in mind from the beginning. <laughs> well, I guess it's because it's, it's such a different documentary. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't feel like a documentary when I've sat down. And, that's the thing is like, well, because I just yesterday mm -hmm. I was talking to two producers who were trying to put together a documentary who haven't seen your film, mm -hmm. and they were like racking their brains, going, "How do we do something different?" And I was like, "You've got to see this movie. This is like <laughs> the most 
different documentary I've seen put together and oh, I was wow. just wondering how you came to it like just to structure it as a film outside of the story because I mean it's like you have the story but then you also have the film I mean does that sure, make sense sure, as like sure. the film technique um, it was yeah, interesting okay. to me now, now uh, when you talk about technique are you talking about the approach that the movie is basically a letter from one person to another person, or are you talking about the the uh, editing style? I guess I'm talking more or? about just the editing and the sound and just the way it like moves, because I mean it hmm. really moves. Oh, well, thanks. It, like, well, I mean, I'm not trying to like, because I've talked to a bunch of people, and this is like one of the craziest documentaries I've seen, like in a while. Yeah. And it's just it moves in such a weird. <laughs> Fashion that I like literally couldn't like turn away from it hmm. after like about five minutes, and it was just oh, wow. okay. wondering what your thought process it was in putting it together the way you did. I guess it's just interesting because it's okay. such a different sort of documentary. Maybe this sounds weird to say. I never really saw it any other way. Um, so there, it wasn't really like a choice per se. I just sort of like this is what I'm doing. The the difficult thing, honestly, in cutting was. Um, I wanted to, like I said, involve people who didn't know Andrew and make you feel like you knew him and make you feel like you were part of the family because I thought, um, you know, when people read a horrible story in the newspaper, they say, oh, that's really horrible, but they don't feel compelled to act on it because, and the reason being, I think, is because they don't know the people. It's like, but if it happened to friends of theirs, they would be, feel personally affected and want to do something. So my goal was to make the audience, you know, Andrew's friend, to make the audience Kate and David's friend. Now the question is, to do that, you have to bring them into the, not just tell the, the events of the story, but you have to bring them into their personal lives and make them feel like they know these people and give them inf you know, information about them. But the question is, how much is too much? You know, because I had an earlier cut that I was a half hour longer when I was first editing and I actually scored and sound designed that cut and I thought I was pretty close to done and I started showing it to some other filmmaker friends of mine who, you know, then finally people were really blunt with me and said, dude, it really hit us hard, it's very impactful, but you've got to chop this down because there's too much, Andrew was great, Andrew was great, you know, there, there was, it was, it was getting repetitive, there was a lot of extra, particularly in the family sequences, there was a lot of extra stuff just about Andrew and everything too, and they said, I feel like I know him, but it's, it's, you're, you're still, you know, you can pick up the pace. And so, and so it was, it was a difficult thing to figure out, how do I part it down so that it's still moving at a good clip, but that people still feel like you're getting enough detail, uh, you know, or, you know, the little personal details that really, the little things that make somebody special, you're getting enough of that to feel involved and feel like you know him, but you're not getting so much that I'm, that I'm dragging on too long and being long-winded. So that in the editing was the hardest thing for me was to, to chop out more details about Andrew that were so precious to me, obviously, too, in order to keep an audience of strangers engaged um, and not feel like I was just kind of being, you know, some sensationalist person and just going with this story that happened, but really keep with my main thing, which was to, well, my, my original, like, thing when I, before this was ever going to be released to the public, sort of the driving force is to introduce Andrew to people who didn't have a chance to meet him. And I've been very happy to see that uh, the movie, as much as the purpose of it has changed, has retained that. Because I've talked to uh, several people who said, dude, whatever happens with this movie, with the law in Canada, you know, thank you for letting me meet that guy. And I was like, oh, wow. And uh, one, of my favorite, one of my favorite moments actually was, um, it's almost a year ago now, but um, uh, at, uh, when Slamdance first accepted the movie, they had a reception for the filmmakers, and I was there. And the head of programming, who's a really wonderful woman, was um, describing the movie to somebody else. And I was listening to her talk about it, and I realized she was talking about Andrew as if she had known him. Mm -hmm. And I was <laughs> like, oh my god, I, that's, that's still there. It worked. You know? so, um, but in ter yeah, so in terms of editing, that for me was the hardest thing, was figuring out how much detail about him or Kate and David was too much, and keeping it going at a good clip to keep that pace that you were talking about while not losing the people. Um, in terms of style, that's just my style. I just, I don't know. I, I try to, I, I, it was the, the cutting is my best attempt to, uh, the cutting and the sound design and the music and the way they all work together is my best attempt to make you feel what I was feeling during that period. To try to, you know, particularly when, you know, the movie at some one point goes off the rails and well, yeah, it just fun. like your whole stomach drops out watching that. So, oh, yeah, so. thank you. Yeah, I, oh, that, that was that was my best attempt to mirror what was going on in my own head when I got that news, or you know, or you know, because they say, like, um, there's a grief counselor I interviewed who's in the movie briefly toward the end who was talking about when you get horrifying, traumatic, you know, life altering news, 
So um, normally you feel one thing at a time. You feel happy, you're sad, hungry, cold, you know, hot, whatever. But you suddenly are feeling every emotion at maximum volume. It's like taking a television and turning up all the knobs to maximum, and you just have this wall of color. And you don't know, you're feeling everything at once, and you don't know what you're feeling anymore because you've never experienced that before. And so that's that's kind of what I, I mean, you know, a movie is a movie, but I tried the best that I could to communicate what that felt like you know or just what it felt like to be there what it felt just in the way i put it together it was my best my best attempt to you know put you in our shoes 